following presentation is HIV pharmacology for CCBC nursing students in Concepts 2. First we're going to talk about HEART, which is highly active antiretroviral therapy. Some goals of the treatment are to um, increase and sustain suppression of viral load. So we want viral load to decrease. We want to maximize the decretion of the viral load. We want to restore and preserve any immune function we have. Um, we want to improve quality of life for our patients because if they're not sick, they're going to have a better quality of life. And we want to reduce HIV-related sickness and death. So morbidity is illness, mortality is death. Those are the four major goals of heart. Some facts about heart treatment. Heart does not eradicate the HIV infection. It does not completely get rid of the HIV infection. It can decrease your viral load so that your viral load is not countable. Um, but it not countable in the sense that viral loads can be counted um, in the thousands. So they're still it's still present in their bloodstream. It's just not high enough to register on any scale. Heart medications are expensive. Medications have to be taken on a specific schedule. Um, as we talked about earlier. If a patient does not take the medication on the schedule as provided because the medications act at a certain type of cell cycle, the patient will not be, the, the um, cell may, will mutate and it won't be, the medication won't be effective. Each patient must be able to adhere to their personal treatment regime, which is why we need to assess the per patient's personal barriers and individualize the plan of care for that patient. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the NRTIs, or the Nucleoside Reverse Transcriptase Inhibitors, our um, prototype or profile drug for this is AZT and Retrovir. There's interactions with Bactrim, so remember you have Bactrim for PCP pneumonia. Um, the interaction between Bactrim and this classification is it increases neutropenia. Additional side effects and adverse reactions are neuropathy, so the numbness and the tingling, GI uh, tolerant, intolerance, so nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, neutropenia, which means it decreases your white blood cells, anemia, headache, difficulty swallowing, etc. Long-term use, we see lipodystrophy, so there is a change in the um, adipose tissue, long-term use. Precautions. We would use this drug very carefully in patients that already have bone marrow suppression. So maybe a patient that has leukemia that's HIV positive, we would use very cautiously. Or a patient that has renal or hepatic dysfunction, which is why it's important to check those chemistries and look at what BUN, creatinine, AST, ALTs are in the, our patients. Then you have the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. And our prototype for this is Sestiva. Um, and the interactions, alcohol increases the CNS effect, so alcohol um, will increase lethargy. Um, it will also increase the liver effects of it, so it will have a uh, greater risk for patients who have liver failure or who have a history of alcohol or drug abuse. One thing uh, to note here is that a high fat meal increases absorption. Oftentimes, nursing students think that's a good thing. Actually, it's not a good thing because we don't. We want the drug to be absorbed at a steady rate of whatever the pharmaceutical company has intended, so that it hits at the right um, time of the cell cycle and then stays in the body for the correct amount of time. So uh, we want to decrease. We want to uh, decrease fat at time at meal time or when we're taking these meds. We want to decrease fat during the time of taking the meds. And additional side effects, we talked about the GI intolerance. You'll see through all of these meds, GI intolerance is one of the number one side effects, which is why I talked about wasting syndrome in one of the earlier um, videos, that patients will often, because of their GI intolerance, lose a lot of weight when they take these medications. Um, additionally, Sestiva can cause liver failure, um, neuropathy, can cause suicide and abnormal vision. So we use it cautiously in patients who have had a history of suicidal ideations or have attempted suicide in the past, patients that have a history of drug or alcohol abuse, as well as patients that are currently in liver failure. 
Now we have our protease inhibitors. You'll see that with this drug we have the lepnovir and the, rit the ritnovir. They together make a drug called Calatra. Um, the veer at the end is a protease inhib inhibitor, so we have Calatra. Um, the interaction here is it may increase liver function tests such as triglycerides and cholesterol. Um, so it needs to be taken, it also needs to be taken with food. Additional side effects are GI intolerance, um, hyperglycemia, which can lead to um, diabetes, um, see, diabetes type 2, and then the long term is the um, lipodystria, as in the very first drug we talked about. So we need to use this drug precautiously in patients that have a history of pancreatitis because of the hyperglycemia and a history of liver impairment. Then we have our entry inhibitors or our Fusion. This is always given sub-Q and, and one thing to remember, one important thing to know about this drug is that 100% of patients will have a local injection site reaction. So it is expected that when they give themselves this drug they're going to have a um, a reaction at the site. So you need to teach our patient under the patient education idea how to understand is it a difference between a reaction to the medication or, or is it an infection or is it some type of cellulitic idea. So this type of reaction is warm, is a, a redness around the area that may become excoriated or dry. A cellulitis will become warm, red, there may be um, may be purulent, may be spreading outside of the borders of the injection site. Additionally, additional side effects of Fusion are it increases the rate of bacterial infections because it suppresses the immunity and sometimes patients have hypersensitivity reactions to this drug as in itching, puritis, things like that. Then we have the CCR5 which is the co-receptor co antagonist. Um, called Miravoc. It's a relatively new drug. Um, its contraindications are liver disease or hepatitis, also cardiac disease or hypotension. Severe side effects is severe uh, hepatotoxicity followed by a rash. So patients will have a rash and then they will have um, liver changes. CNS effects such as dizziness and it can also cause a change in their orientation and their level of consciousness. Other ideas is serum levels um, can be affected positively or negatively by other heart meds. So this drug can affect can affect the effectiveness or the serum levels, the levels of the other medications in their blood. Um, and under the CAM idea, St. John's wort actually decreases the effectiveness of this drug. So patients who are on this drug should be have patient teaching related to ideas. Uh, they shouldn't take St. John's wort, they should be doing thorough skin assessments to identify if they have a rash, um, and then they should identify any changes in the level of consciousness or any dizziness upon standing. Then we have an integrase inhibitor. An integrase inhibitor, side effects there are the CNS effects, which is headache and dizziness. They have an in increased risk for rhabdomyolysis, and we'll talk more in depth about rhabdomyolysis when we get to um, elimination and we talk about renal failure. Uh, same idea as your um, drugs you take for cholesterol would cause rhabdomyolysis, the dark urine, the breakdown of muscle in release being released by the kidneys causing the dark urine which can lead to renal failure. So signs and symptoms of rhabdomyolysis would be that um, they have dark cola colored urine and they complain of general malaise or general tiredness. Um, and this drug as well decreases the effectiveness. Is the effectiveness is decreased when you have St. John's wort, and the integrase and actually um, decreases in effectiveness when taken with rifampin. And rifampin is one of those drugs we take for TB. Bactrim. Well, Bactrim is not part of the heart profile. I do want to talk about Bactrim. Um, because we use Bactrim for two different reasons in HIV positive patients. One reason is we do use it to treat pneumonia in HIV positive patients. We also will use it once a week in order to prevent upper respiratory infections and urinary tract infections in HIV positive patients. It's contraindicated in patients who have renal insufficiency. 
It's also contraindicated in patients who are breastfeeding or pregnant. You can have severe allergic reactions to Bactrim, and it's actually a skin reaction. Um, oftentimes you'll see in your book something called Red Man Syndrome, Steven Johnson Syndrome, and TENS. Well, they're basically all a chemical burn of the first layers of your skin. So Red Man Syndrome is 10% of your body, Steven Johnson Syndrome is 20% of your body, and TENS is over 30% of your body receives a chemical burn related to taking a drug. Um, Red Man Syndrome, Steven Johnson Syndrome, and TENS can also be seen in our myosin, such as our vancomycin and our gentamicin. But Bactrim is, is a large offender of this as well. You'll see the child on the right hand side has um, Steven Johnson syndrome on his back. And if you think about this with an HIV patient, it's very important to do good skin, skin um, inspections and skin assessments on our patients. Because if this affects their skin and their skin is their first layer of protection from infection and breaks down their skin, then um, they're at a higher risk of getting infection. So they have a decreased immune system and now we've taken away another layer of protection for them. Um, so these patients are often seen uh, treated in burn units. Um, they may be treated on the floor with large dressings. Um, it can often be very painful. Additionally, Bactrim can cause renal failure, so we encourage our patients to increase their fluids, if not contraindicated, um, throughout the day so that they may flush the Bactrim out of their, um, through their kidneys, and. Um, Increasing fluid often promotes or challenges renal, um, renal involvement. Some barriers to medication adherence are pill burden. There's lots of pills for them to take. Um, it also becomes a large burden if they don't like to swallow pills. Uh, the cost. HIV medications can be expensive. Um, in the past, we have had uh, programs that actually provide HIV medications for patients. Um, you probably see those, those programs decrease or um, maybe even be eliminated completely due to changes with the Affordable Health Care Act that patients should now be able to um, find health insurance and be covered under health insurance without HIV being a pre-existing pre condition, which is actually good news for our HIV population. Uh, timing of the meds, as we talked about before, it has to be timed at the certain at the, the correct time in order to hit the cell cycle appropriately side effects. You know, see our, our little Kenny there. He, he causes a lot of diarrhea which can lead to the wasting syndrome and imbalances in uh, fluid and electrolytes and homeostasis. Interactions. We talked a bit about there's interactions between Bactrim and certain meds and Rifampin and certain meds and um, the idea of uh, Carposi sarcoma not being able to be treated um, with the interferon because a patient is taking is um, taking a medication for their their other opportunistic infections. So there's some interactions that are concerning. Comorbidities, you, one of the things you probably noticed was the idea of liver and renal involvement. And then we have to be very ca cautious in giving our patients heart therapy who have liver and renal involvement. Unfortunately, patients that have, uh, that are sh have been sharing needles as IV drug users um, often kill their kidney and their liver with drugs. So they have that renal and liver imp impairment um, due to their uh, risk factors. Active substance abuse. Um, HIV positive patients who are actively using drugs often have a hard time uh, keeping track of days, keeping track of what time it is, um, being able to eat at the same time they take medications, and being able to even afford the medications because if they have money, they're going to want to use drugs instead of buy their pills, buy their medications. And then a lack of a support system. 